Hey, what's going on? This is Justin here, back with another movie video. And this time I am going to be talking about all the scary movies I watched during October. And I also have some drawings here. Sometimes when I watch a movie, I'm usually inspired to draw, do like a cardboard. I didn't do one for every movie because that would have been insane. I don't do that anymore. I'm not built that way. <laughs> but yeah, whenever I felt inspired by one of the movies I watched, I would throw down some ink on a, a cardboard and do a little drawing. A lot of streaming ones, and I have some physical media here that I watched as well. So we're going to get right into it, starting with all the streaming movies, and then we'll go right into the discs. First up here on my list is The Omen. Oh no, The First Omen. So this was a prequel to the original Omen, directed by Richard Donner. This was streaming on Hulu, and I quite enjoyed it. It set the tone and the aesthetic and the vibe of the first movie. I felt like they'd be really good to watch back-to-back. -back. There's some really uh, good jump scares in there, as well as some crazy body horror stuff, which was a little disturbing, but uh, I enjoyed that one. And then next, uh, we have It's What's Inside, which was a movie on Netflix. I wouldn't really consider that a horror movie, more like a, maybe like a thriller. I feel like it's in the same vein as uh, Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. But this movie, uh, a bunch of people come together and, and one of the friends brings this like experimental game. And then they all play it and then crazy stuff happens. That's all I'll say because it's really interesting how it, how what the game is and how everything unfolds. I will say I didn't like any of the characters in the movie, so it made it hard to kind of get through because again like they're not likable so I was like I don't care what happens to them <laughs> but I thought it was a really cool premise and I enjoyed it we have Sting which was a movie about a space spider now I wish it leaned more into that because I was actually pretty hyped for this movie when I saw the trailer but then it ended up being more of like a crappy family drama about this it's kind of broken up family none of them are likable i don't <laughs> like i didn't enjoy watching these people on screen i wanted to see a giant spider like eating people and we did get that to a degree but they kind of forced you to like these characters and i didn't like any of them so that was kind of disappointing but uh, i'm glad i watched it as above so below this was also on netflix found footage type movie about these, um, are they archaeologists? I don't know, they're like researchers and they like want to dive into the, the, the Paris catacombs. And uh, this was in 2014 and I, I enjoyed it, it was good. This is my first drawing, I believe. There was a character in there, you barely see him, but I, I'm assuming it was the devil. But he had a really long black hood and like a white face, uh, kind of disfigured. You get real like short glimpses of him. And I thought that was a fun piece to do. The next was Woman of the Hour, which is Anna Kendrick's directorial debut. A woman who has an encounter with a serial killer on the dating game. And this was like a factual thing. This actually happened. It's really tragic. Um, once you like see the, the, this is what happened at, at the end of this encounter. It's really gut wrenching. And I think the fact that it was real is probably what's the scariest thing about it. Anna Kendrick is really great behind the camera. She really knows how to uh, set intention and atmosphere. And it very much reminded me of Fincher's Zodiac, which I think, you know, was one of her inspirations. Two more. These were on Shudder. I watched Asriel, which is a post-apocalyptic action movie starring Samara Weaving. It's about what happens after the rapture. What happens to everyone who's left behind and like they create this crazy cult and um, some crazy stuff happens. <laughs> it's more action than horror, but there's again some body horror stuff in there that's really trippy. And Samara Weaving, you know, given 110%, so she's great. Like, everything that she's in, she's awesome. So that's Azriel, And then the other movie was Oddity. It's like a tale of two sisters. Uh, one of them mysteriously dies, and then the other one is a medium. And she tries to uncover how that happens. And one of the tools that she uses is this giant wooden dummy. And it's very... 
uh, unsettling to look at. Um, so I did do a drawing of it. It doesn't do the real life thing justice, but you know, I played a lot with the line and texture and uh, that was really cool. So that is the uh, wood, the golem from Oddity. It's pretty creepy. And those were all the movies that I streamed. So now going into the discs, we have both nuns. Uh, this seemed to be a running theme in, in my selection of movies was um, crazy nuns and like religious horror. But I enjoyed both of these. I like the second one more than the first one. I really like the character of Valak. And that's the, the demon nun. So cool. So I enjoyed those. We'll be through in some not so scary Halloween type movies for the kiddo. And the first one was The Box Trolls, which I've never seen, from the creators of Coraline and Paranorman, you know, Studio Leica. And I drew one of the box trolls. This is Fish. And the, they're named after the box that they wear. So the human, his name is Eggs. That's Fish. And I think that's Shoe. It's not really, like, scary or anything, but there's some really, like, goofy bad guys that are obsessed with being high class and, and eating all the cheese and... <laughs> And then the next one that we watched for the uh, kid was Wallace and Gromit, Curse of the Were-Rabbit. So I think she's really into stop motion because she was really into both of these movies. If you haven't seen Wallace and Gromit, that is um, DreamWorks and Ardman. It's a good family movie, kind of like a sweet mystery as well. This is the Criterion edition of The Others, the 4K. I remember when I watched this movie in school, I thought it was scary. But then on the rewatch, it was a little slower paced than I remember. But it's a ghost story about this mom and her two children. And they have all these weird rules for their caretakers on how to handle the house. Because there's like weird stuff going on. Don't want to spoil the ending, but it was good. And it looks great in 4K. So next, this is a first time watch. Oh yeah, I should mention a lot of the streaming ones are obviously first time watches. The nuns were first time watches. And the box trolls was first time watch. So I haven't seen a lot of these, which is good. But the next one is Poltergeist. Steven Spielberg produced, Toby Hooper directed. This movie is terrifying. <laughs> and it's rated PG. So obviously they gave Red Dawn and Temple of Doom were like the first movies to get the PG-13 rating. But holy crap, Poltergeist is terrifying. There's some really messed up stuff in this and if i saw it when i was a kid i'd be traumatized i can imagine why a lot of um, people my age now would consider this one of their um intros into horror because this is nuts <laughs> i was very shocked at how simple it was but super effective and the effects are great so poltergeist that was a first time watch what else do we have here oh sleepaway camp i finally watched sleepaway camp this movie's all about its ending the ending's very uh, messed up. And I drew a picture of the main girl there. That's, this is like a screenshot from the ending. If you don't know what it is, you should watch Sleepaway Camp. It's a really good 80s slasher. Kind of cheesy, but effective, for sure. I think it's way ahead of its time. I don't think people knew what this was when they saw it. And then, like, over time, it's become, like, such a cult classic. Next is Motel Hell which I found in a $5 bin at Walmart. This is also a, a Scream Factory release, a collector's edition DVD. This, I didn't like this. <laughs> I, I thought it'd be, um, it's just weird, I guess is the word. I think they're trying to go for like a Texas Chainsaw vibe, but it came off more campy and almost like a parody of these types of movies. Farmer Vincent's really cool. That's him with the the pig head in the chainsaw and there is a really good fight at the end yeah i don't know it was just odd so back in the bin it goes and then uh lastly sadly uh because the great tony todd passed away i watched Candyman: day of the dead i believe this is the third one and you can see here it's got a clearance sticker on it because I found this at a Target for $8.39. And I was like, oh, you can't pass that up. But this movie is not great. Um, 
I mean, the only saving grace is Tony Todd. Like, he's relishing in the fact that he's Candyman. The aesthetic is, like, you know, Dia de los Muertos. And, like, it's so flat. The movie feels very flat. There's no, like, moody, atmospheric stuff to it. They could have really played and leaned on the theme of Day of the Dead. But they didn't, which is unfortunate. But this cover rocks. The movie is just not that good, sadly. But Tony Todd, again, killing it. And I did have a Candyman sketch here as well. So check that out. R.I.P. And then uh, it goes without saying, but I did watch Halloween. I watch it every Halloween. And that is it. Those are all the movies that I watched during spooky season. So a lot of streaming stuff, which I did not expect, but here's all the spines. Let me know in the comments below what you watched for Spooky Season. And if you're going to continue Spooky Season well into the holiday season. I do love watching Christmas horror movies. So if you have some recommendations, I'm always looking for new ones. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked any of the drawings that you saw, um, they're, they're on my Instagram and they are available. So if you'd like to purchase them, just DM me. Follow me on Instagram and Patreon and YouTube. We'll see you on the next. Ooh.